Well, I'm taking a little detour. So this is uh, before my hunt. And this is a little area, um, let's see, south of Boulder City, north of Searchlight. And there's all these solar panels that are out here. Um, you can't miss them if you're on, I think it's Highway 95. And I've got people to my right who are flying uh, RC planes. More people down there, further down, they're riding motorcycles. Um, I'm sure this is BLM land because I see there are campers here. And I saw a bunch of people from the road parked out here. You can kind of maybe see them a little bit on my camera on the left side. Um, and I was just curious, what are they doing out here? All this big group of people. Now, I do know that some of the BLM land, you can do some uh, boondocking. So this might be a place for boondocking. I do see campers out here. These people over here might have tents and such, but this is a great area, just so you know, outside of um, just south of Boulder City, that um, it's flat. It's probably in preparations for most more solar panels, but a great place if you have RV, uh, not RV, but you have RC cars, or planes what a great place to ride and might be a great place to practice drone flying too um, just to find out the regulations so I don't really want to go all the way out there I mean just to see what they're doing but I am gonna pull in here and do a UE just curious I was just my curiosity is like what are these people doing out here right so Big group of people, a lot of tents, etc. Kind of an odd place to just camp. I mean, <laughs> and it is really an odd place to ride a motorcycle too because it's flat. There's really no whoop de doos, no jumps, no terrain, just flat. But it goes on here. Let me, let me turn this off for a second and show you. So it goes on for miles. I mean, we're talking miles and miles. And right there, you can barely see off in the distance. Well, you can't see it, I can see it. That guy right, let's see. Somewhere over there, there's a guy. He's flying an R RC plane. But the group that I was kind of curious about is like, why are there are so many of these people out here? Um, mostly tents. So it makes me wonder, some sort of a day event or something. And you know, it could be an RC group. But I just thought I would videotape that. My curiosity had me going. Um, just to let you know too, that there's all of this land out here that people just come and uh, they either can do camping, I guess, in BLM, and or they have some sort of recreational. Uh, this might be a great place to do some um, what do they call those things where they do like the uh, sail, like the not the, like the, the sail runners on ground? This might be a great place to do something like that. Anyways, on to my destination. So this is the cute little town of Nelson, Nevada. Um, behind me is a ghost town, um, probably a couple miles down the road. And um, Nelson still exists. I think it's I think it's at like three thousand people uh, population. But um, there is a ghost town on the road. On I think it's one sixty five. This is taking me up. There's a bunch of mines up here, and these are mines that have been. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of it's on private. Were at one time privately owned. Now they're uh, on, this is all BLM land up here, but um, there's a lot of mines that are abandoned up here. And I know that they are on the tropical, topographical maps pre-1960s. So I know that this has probably been combed over by a lot of people. And um, anyways, there's a lot of, uh, on the topographical, shows a lot of uh, activity up in this area, a lot of mines. Uh, pre 60s so um, yeah I'll walk around a little bit there's a bunch of lizards man there's a bunch of lizards so far I've seen about some really pretty colorful ones too 
um, and that one snake. So um, I don't mind seeing the lizards. I just don't want to see no snakes. No snakes. I don't like snakes. Just to let you know, I don't like snakes and I don't like sharks. You know, kind of in between everything, right? Yeah. Don't like mountain lions. Don't like bears. Really don't care for the coyotes. Don't like the wolves. Anything that bites, stings, punctures the skin, yeah, I don't like. Wonder where that goes to. There are a lot of mines up here. Well, I may not get much detecting in, but it is an adventure. Now, I was down there on a road um, that was leading me into that place, and they had like that's the signs where it said posted do not enter look at there's a there's a mine hole back there cave hole or some other thing back there um, looks like another hole back there so there, there was other mines back up in that direction and there looks like there's an active one right there See the mine holes, the mine caves. And boy, oh boy, this road is gonna wash out one day right here. Yeah. water tank or something right there and then right next to the water tank or actually right below it is the cave hole right in the center of the screen here so there's another mine up, mine up there uh, there's a couple more mine, mines up through here one was called like a gold nugget mine and something else and there's actually a river wash which I was tempted to stop right here and do a little walk through there's a river wash right here or not a river wash but just a wash um, so you know things up above get all washed down whoops dead end for me ain't no way I'm going up over that probably could do it but ain't gonna do it. It does a sharp, sharp 90 and then up and over. Huh. Now I just gotta figure out how to get myself out of here. It looks like other people did the same thing. Gotta get out of here. Ah. Well, I stopped back at the wash that I mentioned it stopped here before on my way up coming back down here I want you to get a gander of what I, I look like I look like um, you like that it's my uh, Indiana Jones Indiana Jones look yeah now working around uh, working around my son's yard in Vegas um, it's like, eh, I'm gonna get a hat, keep this sun off my face, and uh, maybe prevent some little skin cancer. But uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of funky hats, but it is what it is. 
got to do what you got to do. So one of the things I would expect to find a lot of is that right in front of me. Tin. There's a fence post right there. There's another piece of metal right there. But I would expect to find lots of this. Lots of this. Be it old pop cans, coffee cans, tobacco cans. I've already come across that before in the Oregon Trail. There's another piece right there. Piece of tin. So, a lot of iron. And this is the wash. There's more iron right there in my shadow. Right there. And I think that's good. Is that iron? Yeah, that is iron. Piece of metal. And what else? But I would also hope, yeah, see there's, looks like there's nail right there. Another piece of iron, chunk of iron, wire. That just means that people have been here. Um, albeit, I don't know how long ago. And I'm sure that this is an area that, um, you know, since there's gold mining and stuff, I'm sure that this is an area that's been panned uh, pretty good. Almost looks like a. Oh, look at that. Looks like a piece of porcelain. I like to find porcelain. Um, this is more iron. Oh my gosh, there's more iron. Oh. All right. Well. I'm not going to keep walking and keep walking and um, and, and a half mile up there is more, more tin. But again, even though iron is present, there's a pipe, it also meant that people were present. Now the problem is, is how long ago? I don't know. I tried um, prospect, gold prospecting, and of course this would be I mean, there's so much iron. I have to I have to find a good piece of gold nugget to test it on. But I got another. I got a good. Oh, I had another. I videotaped one conductive target, and a piece, it was a piece of tin. I'll show you that later, maybe at the end. But I got one here also. This one's coming in better. Repeatable on both sides. No iron around it. I'm getting like a sixty. 66, 67, and um, it's kind of hard to, I can't stick my shovel in the ground anywhere. I think I see it. Ooh, I got round. I got something round. What is this? Oh, oh, man, I'm gonna get eaten up by these flies. Well, what is that? A, a, like a like a rivet? A button rivet? Off a Levi jacket or something? Ooh, all right. I'm gonna keep moving because these flies are gonna, these biting flies are gonna eat me alive if I sit still for too long. But, all right, well, that's, it looks kind of like a rivet thing or something. And it might have writing on it, who knows. All right, cool. It is something old and it is conductive. I'll take that. Let's keep going, see if I can find anything. All right, these little flies are nasty. I forgot to spray it off. I got a low tone. 50, 47, and it's repeatable right in this little area. My guess is a piece of tin. Oh, I gotta keep moving though. These flies 
you do freaking bite. Well, my guess is, is I can't. Maybe I'm more modern camp, for all I know. Oh, look at that. You see it? I see it. It's right there, right It's an old part of a pocket, pocket knife. Yeah, well, it's a conductive item. Not exactly a coin, but again, signs of life, right? It's, I'm working this little wash. I see a pop can or some sort of can. I saw, I saw uh, like a wine bottle twist off a little while ago. So things wash and then there's that mine that's up top, right? So everything washes down even the trash. See, I'm looking like along this wash here, somebody started to dig out an area. Now, I noticed there's a little bit of quartz in that rock. I just picked up this nice little piece of rock with some crystal in it. Um, I'm not sure if that's about quartz or not, but uh, yeah, somebody's doing a little sample, sample digging here and there. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, it's kind of me giving me a funky tone, but it should have been giving me a nice high tone. I mean, it was giving me a iffy off and on tone. It's a old pipe fitting. And, uh, yeah, in the middle of the wash, pretty heavy, sunk in right behind this rock. Dropped and sunk. Three-eighths of an inch. Well, I'm assuming that's brass. Well, I was heading to my truck, got it started to get it cooled off, and I had this high tone. It sounds nice and loud and shallow it's a 90 I my guess is it's a can um, uh, it's right there it's down there okay what would you want it to be, right? It sounded pretty loud, so, but coin would be awesome. A ring would be awesome. I don't know what to expect. Oh yeah, it's, it was loud. It's pretty deep, so it's not gonna be, oh, I hit it. It's not gonna be anything small. What is that? Big old piece of metal. Oh, let's see. Am I gonna have to use the shovel? Oh my gosh. That's what we find out here. Woo!
little town here. I thought it said 3,000. I could have been wrong. Maybe it said 300. But the little town I just drove through, it's really small, mostly trailers. Mostly trailers and a couple uh, makeshift buildings and a lot of trash. Um, over here and such. But just down the road, so the Vegas is basically um, north that way. And this is, I think, 165 right through here. Uh, yeah, this is 165. So if you continue uh, from Vegas, Boulder, on 165, you'll run into a ghost town down here, which I think has been now a tourist trap. But we're going to go take a peeky at it. The area known as Nelson was originally called El Dorado in 1775 by the Spaniards who made the original discoveries of gold in the area that is now El Dorado Canyon. The town was the site of one of the first major gold strikes in Nevada and one of the biggest mining booms in state history. Gold and silver were discovered here in 1859. The rush to the canyon began in 1861 several mining camps were established in the canyon and a steamboat landing at the mouth of the canyon on the Colorado River and the town was called Colorado City. In its heyday the area established a reputation of being rough and lawless. During the American Civil War deserters from both the Union and Confederate armies would wander here hoping that such an isolated location would be the last place military authorities would look for them. The community called Nelson was named after Charles Nelson, a camp leader who was slain in his home along with four other people in 1897 by the renegade Indian Avot. The town was laid out in 1905 and almost died during the Depression. The town saw a small regrowth in the late 1930s but slowly faded after the 1940s after reaching a population growth of 600. Very interesting place. Um, asked a gentleman if they live around here, and the guy inside said they has going on 29 years living in this area. Um, they have a very, like I said, it was kind of a touristy trap but uh, wasn't as what I thought it was going to be. They said the first 15 minutes is free <laughs> to walk around. Uh, anything longer than 15 minutes is a dollar. And uh, so I bought a pop for a dollar fifty and I said, hey, can I just give you five dollars uh, just to walk around and take some pictures? And uh, this is pretty cool. So this used to be the town of Nelson which now has moved down the road just a little bit but I'm assuming that a lot of these are remnants of um, of years gone past and we do have a church or a wedding going on today the church Man, I wonder if they sell these things I mean, can you imagine the what's that guy what's that show again antique collector what's that show oh, you know which one I'm talking about right and the other guy, there's another guy who restores all these things. Oh, look at that sign back there. They would just die for that sign. And I used to work with a co-worker who restored those. Of this stuff though was actually rebuilt and I have to go back and look at some of the old pictures but he was showing inside um, a movie clip now the movie clip looked like it had Kurt I don't know Kevin Costner and Kurt Russell in it and they're in a the desert and can you name that movie Kevin Costner and Kurt Russell when he was much much younger and there was a film filmed right through here. Part of it was filmed here. Let me know if you know what the movie was. Oops, I'm assuming that you're not supposed to go past that line there because it's roped off. Oh, maybe that's where the church is back there. 
So I think there was a wedding going on back there. It says motel, but... Yeah, not much of a tourist trap. That was my mistake. One dollar to walk around, take pictures after 15 minutes of, you know, self-viewing. Again, I did, I did ask him. Uh, look at the outhouse. <laughs> I mean, may not have been the original outhouse, but it's an outhouse. There are some restrooms here too, so. Um, need old cars. They just have a lot of people who stop. They just don't want people to freeload. Um, so they gladly will take your donations. Anyways, they do have tours here, mine tours. They actually had a little video thing going on inside. We were talking about the movies, and then that's when I asked him about uh, the fee. I asked him about metal detecting, and he said that um, no metal detecting on the federal lands, like down in the state parks. He says, if you go down there and they do it, they'll take your detector away from you. And uh, he's, he wasn't sure about the BLM, the guy who's lived here for 20 nine years 22 years whatever it was he said that the blm land was okay which was the area that i was at i was at the blm land um up where the mines were and um, i did not i did cross the no trespassing sign once only because i read a lot of times people just post it to keep people out but i did back up out of there um when i saw that there was a residence up in there so But this is a pretty cool little pit stop of odds and ends and oddities. That must be a Vegas tour. It's El Dorado Canyon, 1864 to 1964 or the Colorado River from the point that runs, this point runs El Dorado Canyon, where it occupied one of the biggest mining something in Nevada history. Gold and silver were discovered here by 1859 and soon rich mines were developed. In the 1860s, the canyon was busting with a rowdy population of nearly 500 men. Many of these said to be something from the Civil War. The river, was something navigation something this time making it possible to bring in food and supplies by boat notorious something its feuds and shootings the canyon was equally well known for three largest mines the tech tech tea cup wall street and savage which Something yielded five million dollars during 40 years of operation. And that's kind of where I was at. I was really close to the El Dorado um, mine, but none of those, of course. And there's talks about the uh, tech, is it tech chack teacup? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, it was one of the most important mines in the El Dorado Canyon. It produced millions of dollars of gold ore. Oh man, I used to have one of those that was probably about 10 times its size smaller. I sold it on eBay for about four. 450 bucks. And you've got like three of them laying around here on the walls, giant ones. Man, they've got so much money just laying around here, you can't believe it. Parking lot's pretty full, but still, you know, if you're paying a dollar, you know, it's $20 an hour, which isn't much of nothing, but the tour probably costs a little bit more. Yeah, a lot of money laying around, just 
all these signs. These signs. Oof. And the only sign of life I've seen so far is chipmunk, lizards, a quail, a few birds, and a dang stinking biting, biting beetles. Due to abundancy of stupid people, stay out. Jukebox. Man, pickers. That's the show. Pickers. Dang it. Yeah, if they ever wanted to make some extra money, pickers, man. Oof. I wonder if they've ever been here before. Hello? Hello? Don't be here after dark. Yeah, probably people throwing, breaking rocks, breaking their windows. School buses. After a while, they probably just go around and buy stuff. Just a set out here that look old. Area 51 license plate. General store down there. That's pretty cool. I hate to think what's inside it. Headlock on it. Wow, well, I wonder how far this goes. I know that the um the fee area, the signs are all, all over the place, so I'm assuming it's the whole area. So let me walk across the street, give my camera a little rest here, because it's overheating. No trespassing. What do they call those? Uh, not, not wheelies. Dang it. <sighs> Jeeps, what are they? Due to the abundance of stupid people, just don't walk around. Tours only. Huh. Well, there was a there was a guy that was going to take people around on a tour. I'm not sure if he's taking people on a walking tour or what. There's a sign down there that says stop. There's an airplane, airplane part. I'm just gonna turn around here. But let's stay off. I'm sure that means the plane. Look at that baby. Yeah, let's go traveling the country. It's pretty neat rock formation. This white, this white, white stone. Anywho, what is this? Does anybody know what this is? What 
type of travel trailer is this? Look at that bus, what the heck. Homemade uh, Partridge Family bus. Well, that's different. That's very different. What? the heck all right that's <laughs> that's different that's what you call a homemade jobby there that's pretty cool though huh? <laughs> I love it A lot of good pictures here that would make a good puzzle. A lot of stuff in the hills, mining, probably pipes for, you know, if I can get the water going. Look at all the, um, they had like, uh, what do you call these, like catchments, like little water reservoirs probably. Interesting, very interesting. I question that living in the desert probably lives in one of those trailers back in Nelson I mean, alright one last little looky loo down here and then we're on the road again I just can't wait to get on the road again All my troubles seem so far away I don't know the lyrics to the song And I'll be gone again What's that bad deer? I, mean, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine living in the desert Hike, kayak, bike, desert adventures Free advertisement, 702-62-Kayak. Ouch, look at that vent. <laughs> That's a little scary. Gonna prop up the building with a couple big pieces of timber. Oh man, this this uh, yeah, this Nevada wind is something else. I see pipe popping up just by saying there's an air conditioning unit. This one, sunny pipe lives in this thing. It's kind of not the uh, most. Um, not trespassing. Eric.
conditioning. I wonder how sealed this little building is. And that's the end. And you got some buses, which are pretty cool. Express. Pretty neat. An old fire truck back there. Well, I have to say that I am pleasantly surprised and glad I stopped. I was thinking it was going to be a huge, exorbitant, exorbitant amount just to meander around, but. That wasn't bad. So if you're ever in Vegas and you're near Boulder City or Henderson, come out and see this ghost town of Nelson. It's inexpensive. There's a lot of neat stuff here to see, even though I did walk around and show you a lot of it, but it is different when you see it in person. And in the video, it just not does not do it justice. I did not obviously see everything. And um, so, definitely come and watch the video maybe take the tour i'm tempted to do the tour but i'm by myself um i'm still here for a few more weeks and maybe my wife after watching these videos might want to come back and we might just do have to do the tour 